Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up, the home edition. Today I want to show you um, my little guide to seed sowing. I've had a couple of questions that I haven't really covered in any of the videos and I want to try and give a guide as to what I do and how I use things and why I do those things and hopefully give you a heads up. You've got to remember in gardening there is no right way. There is no one way. There is always... Um, many different ways to, to grow a lettuce, shall we say. But um, we'll get on with it and uh, see what you can learn. Right, I'm going to start with sieving some compost. This is uh, a bone of, con not a bone of contention, but it's some people sieve their compost, others don't. Uh, I'm one of the ones that sieves compost. And somebody asked me once why I wear gloves when I'm sieving compost. Simply this, it's black as the ace of spades and all that black will go into your hands and uh, very quickly you'll have very dirty hands, especially when you're sieving them out the compost that I'm sieving. Now these are the bits I'm getting rid of. I don't want those in seed compost. I want this nice fine stuff. And uh, I'll just get rid of this. Before we move on any further, somebody was asking yesterday about this mesh that I use. That's 10 mil or in old money, three eighths of an inch. And that's just to get rid of those big lumps. Right, the reason why I want this fine stuff, if it's got all those bits in and you just plonk it into a seed tray like this, you're gonna have holes of air in there for when your seeds go in there. Yes, you can pack it down, but there are still going to be holes in there. And what this does, why I like it sieved, is because the, the, once this is in there and the seeds are in and covered, it's totally, the seed is totally surrounded by damp compost. This allows that seed to be completely surrounded by moistness. The shell will soften and the sprout will come out. So it's more efficient to get better germination rates. Now, both methods work, don't get me wrong, if you put the rough compost in, you will get germination. It just won't be as efficient as if it's got sieved compost. And as you saw there, there's enough there to fill a seed tray, and it took me 30 seconds. So it's no big deal in, in that respect. Now, what you also have with um, sieved compost, the thing that turns out to be very beneficial when you come to get your seedlings out and I'll I'll just take some out of here so I've got a bunch of seedlings in my hand there all I've now got to do is hold them carefully and give them a shake and I'm left with seedlings and roots so I can now just pick them out like that makes it lovely and easy to just pot on I mean how easy is that <coughs> Excuse me. If you've got those big lumps of compost in there, those dangly roots there will grab around. It'll, they'll try to grab hold of anything. You can see little dangly bits it's got hold of there. They'll just be bigger, and as you try to pot them on, they become more cumbersome. So again, it's more efficient to use the sieve compost rather than the thicker stuff. So that's that's my take on that, and that's why I sieve compost. Now another question I get asked a lot is do you use multi-purpose compost, do you use peat-free compost, do you use a seed start starting compost? No I don't, I just use a bog standard multi-purpose compost, whatever is cheap and reasonable. I try to stick away from um, stuff that's woody or just too fibrous, I mean, um, have I got any of this left? I mean I've got one here which you can see is just fiber. There's a lot of chicken feathers in there in comparison to that one. You can see the difference hopefully in that. That I don't think is very good for starting seeds, but it will work. So let me get rid of that. So we also got to bear in mind as a seed has got everything it needs to start wrapped up in that shell. Once it's moist and it's broken out, it can grow and it will grow to its first seed leaves and beyond to 
its first true leaves. Now, if you look at this tomato here, these are its seed leaves, these sorts of, they're almost an oval shape. They're the first leaves to come up and your compost will support it all the way up to getting these first leaves. These are what you call the true leaves, it's first true leaves. Once it gets to that stage, you want to be feeding your plants. So you want a good compost that will feed your plants. And I always work on the basis that compost will feed plants for six weeks. After that, they want to be potted on into fresh compost or a one star feeding them. Now, there's a number of ways of doing that. These, I say these tomatoes, I spoke about these the other day. You pop plants on when you can see the white roots coming out the bottom here, then you know that that plant has filled that little capsule with roots and it's now trying to escape at the bottom and that is then a good time to pot it on. I don't think I've got any coming out of there. Let's see if I can get one out without killing it. As I say, there's no roots coming out the bottom at the moment, but you can see there are, there are some there and it's forming, you know, a, a good plug plant and very soon these roots here will be coming out the bottom. So what that tells me then is that plant has almost used all of that feed in that compost. And then you want to really move on your pot just so it's just a little bit bigger than that. If you put it straight into a bigger pot, that little seedling into a bigger pot and then water it, it's then surrounded by a lake and there's every chance that that plant will then drown. So this is why you move up the, um, the plant pot sizes little bit by little bit. When I plant these on, there will be roughly half an inch of compost all around it, new compost. They'll stay in there for two to three weeks. I'll pot them on again, a little bit bigger. Again, fresh compost all the time. It's not getting stale. They're getting feed all the time. They're growing, they're thriving. And they don't know that they're being repotted. They've just got extra little bits of feed. And all the time the roots are growing out, making that plant bigger and stronger. So that's what you really want to be aiming at. Now, with some hungry plants, things like uh, cucumbers, squashes, courgettes, sweet corn, these sorts of things, you've really got to give them a bit more feed. They are hungry buggers. Um, so what I do is once, I'll pot these on into a um, sort of a nine centimeter pot, a three inch pot. And when they get potted on again, I will be adding some of this to my compost, just a handful in the tray, mix it all up. This is blood fish and bone. It's probably the best feed I can recommend for people to use. It's granular feed, as you can see. And it's, I think it's 555 with the nitrogen and uh, potassium and phosphorus in there. So it's a good balanced fertilizer and it will just help to pep them plants up. And I'll also use that, you'll see me using this an awful lot through this year. I'll use that for planting all my plants. It all, all, always put some of that in the, in the hole. So use some of that for your hungry plants and say tomatoes, they are a hungry plant along with those others that I mentioned. So when it comes to filling up your little plug trays, you just shake it in, tamp it down, and that really should be enough. Now you'll see a lot of people, and they're like this, pushing the compost down. But what you'll generally find is, when they're pushing it down and refilling it, they are multi-sowing. So they're putting more than one plant into each cell. Therefore, it needs more compost. Therefore, it's a good idea to get as much in as you can. I say no. I know Charles Dowding is a big exponent of that. And when multi-sowing, it does make the difference. But otherwise, I don't do that. I mean, it's even hard to get this, get it out. I'll just fill it up and tamp it down and brush it off. That's now ready. I use the best digit out there and put holes in. And I'll grab these seedlings and I want them as deep as possible. Now with these seedlings, you can see the first true, the first seed leaves are here and I'm holding it by the true leaf. And I'm just lowering it into that hole 
and I'll plant it all the way up to those seed leaves so that now will make a lovely strong plant there's nothing wrong with that at all it's got a good start a uh, good amount of compost in there and if necessary if it gets too if it fills that tray before I'm ready to plant it out I'll just pot it on again keep it growing don't leave plants to stall don't let them stop growing at all but give them some decent room I hope you can see that quite clearly how the seed leaves are at uh, soil level there now this little plant is quite fragile, you saw the little roots it had on it, the little stem, you know, it's very fragile and if I started to squirt water at it, it's going to knock it over, it's no good. So the best thing to do is to pop them on a tray and water it from underneath. That will take the water up and you'll see, eventually you'll see the surface of that glistening with the water. Oops. <laughs> hope I caught that <laughs> um, you'll see that glistening on the top and, and you'll know that's watered enough and you can just take it away and drain it and store it wherever you need to but that's by far the best thing when plants are that small <laughs> I got wet <laughs> so just to recap you, I recommend sieving your compost you don't need to but it's more efficient if you do. It's more efficient to get better germination and it's more efficient to get your seedlings out of that compost and move them on to get them potted on. Remember also that the seed has got everything it needs to, to grow to way past its seed leaf, even onto um, you know, the first couple of the true leaves. So it's got all it needs. All it needs is water and sunlight. And at this time of the year, when it's, you know, the end of winter and it's still a little bit chilly, just a bit of gentle warmth, putting it on your windowsill could be enough just to get it going. Some plants need a, be a better temperature control than that, but um, they're the basics of getting a seed going. Once it's out, you can then plant it out into a little pot like that and then keep it moving on. While it's young and uh, tender, water it from underneath. When it's a bit bigger, you can water it with a watering can or a hose pipe, you know, whatever you, you feel you need. Hungry plants, don't forget to feed them in your compost. I always work on the premises to say that compost will last me six weeks. I know some promote that they will last longer than that, but I do find, especially with hungry plants, that even those ones that promise four months feed, they very rarely give it. Um, so always add some extra feed for the hungry plants. Tomatoes and squashes and courgettes and those sort of things. But anyway, that's it for today. I just thought I'd give you a quick update on that. If you've got any more questions, put them in the comments and uh, we'll see what we can do to answer them. All right, thanks very much. See you soon. Take care. Ta-ra now.